We're going to identify linear, quadratic, and exponential functions from their graphs, from their tables, and also talk about how to write equations for each type of function. So in a linear e function, what you'll notice is the tables are going to have a constant addition or subtraction pattern. When you look at your table, you want to look for your change in your y values, and if it's constant addition or subtraction, that makes it linear. If you look at a graph, these graphs make a straight line. So the graph of this function looks like this. Now, in order to write your equation, linear equations, those are our slope-intercept form equations, or point-slope form. So m, remember, m represents our slope, which is going to be our change in our y value compared to our change in our x. So in this case, our slope is going to be 1. I'm sorry, our slope is going to be 3 over 1. And then our b, that's our y-intercept value, that's the place where x equals 0, so that's going to be a value of 2. If we're thinking about an exponential function, exponential functions have constant multiplication or division patterns. So again, look at your table oops, and look for your pattern. In this case, our pattern is constantly multiplying by 2. On a graph, these graphs, these exponential functions, make a curve. So your graph would look something like this. And finally, when it comes to writing our exponential equation, we use this form. y equals the start value times the change to the x power. Now our start value, that's where x equals 0. So our start value here is going to be 2. Our change, that refers to our pattern. So our pattern is times 2. And then don't forget, we need to have our variable x as our exponent. All right, the last type of function we want to look at is our quadratic function. Now, quadratic functions, their patterns are a little different. Instead of having a constant first difference, we have what's called a constant second difference. So here's a quadratic table. If you look at the differences, the first time we find our pattern, it's not consistent. Minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, and then it goes plus 1, plus 3, plus 5. That's not constant. So what we would do is find our second difference, and you'll notice in a quadratic function when you find your second difference, then it's constant. That second difference is going to be important to us a little bit later. Okay? So, what does it look like on a graph? On a graph, quadratic functions make a parabola. A parabola looks like this. Parabolas can either open up or down, so they may look like this if it opens down, or it might look like this. But those are our parabola shape. And then finally, if we're looking at our quadratic equation, it follows this format, y equals ax squared. Now the only value we're going to plug into this right now is that a value. And that a value is related to this second difference. It isn't the second difference, but it's related to it. So in order to find the a value, what you have to do is take half of your second difference. So if you look up here, our second difference is 2 plus 2. Half of that is 1. So that means our a value is going to be 1, and we'll plug in a 1, and then keep our x squared. And that's the diff so there's the di the, those are the differences between linear, quadratic, and exponential functions.